there is no basis to say that more CO2 in the air is going to lead to catastrophic global warming. But what do we really know about the greenhouse effect? You're dealing with something where there's legitimate uncertainty in science. Is there a real solution to our dependency on fossil fuels? If humankind is going to have a future on this planet, it is absolutely inevitable that we're going to have to find another energy source. And does America and the world have the political will to tackle what could become the most troubling issue of the 21st century? The notion of reducing carbon dioxide emission levels by the year 2010 is a complete fantasy. We are not going to do it as a society. Tonight, PBS's premier science and investigative series join forces to investigate the truth about global warming. For most of history, humans believed that the weather was governed by forces outside their control. But today, we're no longer so sure. Something weird, it's claimed, is going on with the weather. From storms and hurricanes to droughts. Withering heat waves in Texas and in Florida, cities that are setting thousand-year records for high temperatures. How much more proof do we need that global warming is real? And the future, some argue, could be apocalyptic, as ice caps melt and sea levels rise as much as 20 feet. Over the last few years, you begin to get increased probability of extreme events, you're beginning to get a sense that these things are happening more than they used to. And people are beginning to connect that with global warming. Vice President Gore is so convinced humans are warming the planet, he advocated an international treaty committing America to drastically reduce emissions from oil, gas, and coal. Burning these fossil fuels, he argues, puts greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which trap heat and warm the globe. His opponents object that the risks are exaggerated, and any attempt to limit or get rid of oil, gas, and coal, which provide 90% of our energy, will cause an economic apocalypse, from job losses to recession. This is the United States government identifying with a policy that would be devastating what the long-term goal of the Vice President of the United States is, is to ultimately eliminate all fossil fuel use in the United States. That is their goal. At the heart of this contentious issue is a battle for the truth. When we strip away the rhetoric and politics, what does science really know about global warming? The question has pushed the once obscure science of climatology into the spotlight. Okay. But the climate system has turned out to be very complex. Spectacular. But now we're getting near the end of the run where the CO2 level is much more than double present day. And scientists' pronouncements about the future of the planet vary widely as they struggle to determine whether the changes in the climate are natural or caused by human beings. A five degree warming will just change the whole climate system radically. Precipitation patterns will be entirely different. The amounts of precipitation will be entirely different. The climate changes whether or not human beings have something to do with it. You know, there's this, this little anomaly called the Ice Age. The Earth's climate naturally goes from its current state to having 5,000 feet of ice over Chicago. The climate is unstable. Tonight, NOVA and Frontline set out to uncover the truth about global warming. A lot is at stake. Any new climate treaty must not result in serious economic harm to the United States. What could be more basic than that? From the wealth of nations to the future of the planet.
Are humans warming the globe? Or are we an insignificant influence compared with the natural forces which have determined the climate for millions of years? If you sat down and said, I'm going to design a public issue that is the absolute worst nightmare of every scientist, of every communicator in the world, you couldn't do better than the greenhouse effect. You're dealing with something that's very complicated. You're dealing with something where there's legitimate uncertainty in science. It's not that people are trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. There's legitimate uncertainty. You're dealing with something that has enormous consequences for people. And you're dealing with something whose effects will happen 30 years down the road, you know, when they happen. And then you say, you give people this and say, okay, do something about it. It is, in fact, a heat wave of global and historic proportions. Much more than just the issue is typically framed in the media as a simple question. Wasn't exactly is it getting warmer? Figures in from Canada today show October 98 was the warmest October on Earth on record. Caused power dips that delayed subway service. Unfortunately, when people talk about global warming, it's always in terms of, oh, gosh, it was hot last summer. And that doesn't work because weather and climate are two very different things. Climate is sort of long-term things. Weather is short-term, daily, hourly, monthly, whatever. Uh, and what we're talking about when we talk about the greenhouse effect is we're talking about climate. James Treffel is a physicist and science writer who has followed the global warming issue closely. In order to say it is actually getting warmer now, you have to know what it's been in the past. And you have to know that what you're seeing is not just a fluctuation. I mean, I, I remember when I was a kid uh, in, in the uh, 50s uh, hearing stuff about the coming ice age because there was a, we were in a, a kind of a little cold snap then. And people, I remember pictures in the covers of magazines showing glaciers moving down across American cities. So uh, if, you, if you take any short-term timeline, any short-term database for temperature and extrapolate it, you can get the crazy results. In order to make an incontrovertible case for global warming, you'd have to have a long-term temperature record uh, centuries that was over a large part of the globe. And so you have to look over a long term and say, what's the average been for several hundred years? And is this a significant departure from that? And that's what's very difficult to do. Bad weather in one place at one time does not prove the climate is changing. To prove humans are warming the globe, requires detailed knowledge of the entire Earth's weather over long stretches of history. And this has turned out to be an enormously complex scientific challenge. The Earth is a big place. Three quarters of it is covered by water. There are giant ice caps and deserts and mountains. But climate scientists somehow need to take the Earth's global temperature. Today, the Earth's weather is measured daily all over the globe by an international network of stations. On land and sea, which report temperature, pressure, rainfall, humidity, and a host of other variables. Such global measurements are the prime database for climatology. Millions and millions of figures have been collated, corrected, adjusted, and synthesized. The problem is these measurements have only been taken systematically for a century. When averaged, a pattern emerges. During the past 100 years, the global surface temperature has risen by one degree Fahrenheit, or about half a degree Celsius. This is a temperature record of the entire Earth's surface, not just the weather in one place. But is a one degree rise over a century a little or a lot? What's really remarkable about the warming over the last century is both its magnitude, uh, in terms of half a degree Celsius, and it's the uh, fact that it's been almost worldwide. Almost every site you look at has warmed dramatically since the middle of the last century. But not everyone's convinced this is evidence that humans are warming the globe. Fred Singer, an atmospheric physicist, is one of a small band of scientists who have become known as greenhouse skeptics. 
He argues that the 100-year record is not what it appears to be. The data are ambiguous. For example, the data show that the climate warmed between 1900 and 1940, long before humanity used much energy. But then the climate cooled between 1940 and 1975. Only in the last few decades do rising global temperatures seem to coincide with the greenhouse gases we put into the atmosphere. Skeptics like Singer have also argued that long before the Industrial Revolution, the climate warmed naturally. For example, records show that in the Middle Ages, parts of the world like Greenland were warmer than today. The Vikings built settlements there and farmed the land. The Vikings were able to grow crops and life was good in Europe. Cathedrals were being built. There was plenty of food. Climate change is a natural phenomenon. Climate keeps changing all the time. It's either warming or cooling. But records of one place, like Greenland, during one time, the Middle Ages, may not prove anything. Only by knowing the average global temperature a thousand years ago can scientists know whether the Earth back then was warmer or colder than today. What we're looking for is a period in the past or periods that were as warm or warmer than today. Because of course, if they were that warm, they were probably that warm due to natural processes. And that might give us some clues about what natural processes, as distinct from human ones, could be causing the warming today. Long before thermometers were invented, human beings recorded the weather sometimes in great detail. And these records are now being scrutinized by climate historians. Weather was a, an extremely important variable in daily life. And most people worked outdoors, and they were outdoors for most of the day. They were much more vulnerable and they knew it. And for this uh, reason, there was an extreme interest in any kind of, of, of predictions. Throughout history, there have been people who documented events regularly and meticulously. Physicians, artisans, and the monks here at Einsiedel in Switzerland. They recorded the time the cherry blossom appeared the freezing and thawing of lakes, the state of the wine harvest. For instance, a very early cherry blossom is uh, always related to a very warm month of March. If the lake of Zurich is completely frozen, we know that it's equivalent to two extremely cold months, always, because we know it from, uh, from the period when we have both the observations and the measurements. From these diverse records, climate historians can glean a lot about the past climate. By combining data from many sites, this clever forensic work can yield a detailed picture of areas like Central Europe going back more than 1,000 years. Has Pfister found any period in the past as warm as the 1980s and 90s? We had other periods, which was also uh, very warm but it was equivalent to the, to the 20th century prior to 1988, I would say. This was a period of warm climate, but I would say it was a period of warm natural climate. To the period between 1988 and 1997, there is absolutely no equivalent as far as I can look back. <laughs> 